All fossil fuel investment must stop to address the global climate crisis. That's the major takeaway from the International Energy Agency's latest climate report. The roadmap demands a major shift in the energy landscape to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. It suggests relatively wealthy countries should phase out coal-fired power plants by the end of the decade. The sale of new petrol and diesel cars should be banned by 2035. And global investment in clean energy should double to more than $6 trillion a year within nine years. The report does not support calls for some states and federal politicians to continue investment in fossil fuels like coal-fired power stations or Australia's plans for a gas-fired recovery. Joining me live now is Australian Renewable Energy Agency CEO Darren Miller. Uh, Darren, this report wasn't really tailor-made to Australia, was it? But I'm sure there's a few messages in there. Yeah, hi, Laura. So, you know, the report is really saying what Australia is underway doing with uh, our incredible uh, progress that we've made in renewable energy to date, with uh, almost 25% of our electricity coming from renewable sources now. And there's sort of no stopping that transition because renewables are now the cheapest uh, form of new energy generation. And so we just need to figure out how to have that happen in a secure, reliable way as we balance the system. And also, as we turn our attention to the other parts of the economy mm. uh, outside of the electricity sector, where it's important to make progress on technologies to reduce emissions in those areas too. Yeah, indeed. When we keep on hearing about this government's push for a gas-fired uh, recovery, see this big announcement in Curry Curry today, is the Prime Minister right to say that the government needed to intervene to make sure that we didn't see a peak in prices? Or could it have been done with renewables? Well, we know that renewables are the cheapest way to produce the energy of the future. And solar and wind in particular, and Australia is blessed with amazing sun and wind conditions to produce renewable energy. Those technologies are going to be the bulk of where we get our energy supply from in the future. The key question and what the government is addressing is how do we balance the system with these higher shares of renewable energy? So as we go from our current situation of 25% renewables up to 50%, closer to 75%, and then one day, to 100%, we need to figure out what are the technologies that are required for the mm. morning peaks and those evening peaks when the sun and wind are not always available. And so, okay. so gas is an important element like, of that. So what does the mix look like, Darren? You know, we're talking about this 2050. It's not a target. It's more of a goal or an aspiration at the moment. I suspect that may change around the Glasgow conference, but as the, as the situation is at the moment, um, net zero emissions by 2050, what does the mix look like in Australia? It's a good question, and obviously we'll figure that out as we get closer towards that end target, and, and that could take 20 or 30 years, as you've pointed out. But the mix will be a predominant share of wind and solar, so a majority of the energy will be coming from wind and solar. In fact, perhaps even more than 100% of what we need will come from wind and solar, because we need to have, have our eye on the export opportunity. And we are in, a, in an amazing position in Australia to provide renewable energy to the world, uh, in the form of upgraded minerals and ores and hydrogen. These are the technologies which will get us even beyond the 100% that people uh, are, are uh, concerned about. And then uh, the key thing is how do we balance the system for those remaining hours? And batteries, pumped hydro, hydrogen and natural gas will play a role over the coming decades. Mm. Interesting with the push on hydrogen, it's still essentially powered by fossil fuels, isn't it? And why aren't we talking about nuclear? So we'll talk about hydrogen first. And the, the world produces and consumes about 70 million tonnes of hydrogen today, most of that produced by natural gas and some by coal. ARENA is at the forefront of making the push for Australia in moving to renewable hydrogen and clean hydrogen, which could come from gas with carbon uh, capture and sequestration. But we've made great strides in this country, and ARENA has been uh, providing funding to this industry for the last few years, in producing hydrogen from renewable energy. So it's, it's essentially zero carbon hydrogen. Uh, we've committed just recently $103 million to three large projects, uh, and we're really encouraged by the progress that we're going to be making over the next decade in this technology. As for nuclear, uh, as we would know, there's a moratorium on nuclear in Australia, and certainly mm -hmm. nuclear has not been an arena's mandate. Uh, and I would be uh, very confident in saying that we have got the tools available through solar and wind to solve this problem in the next decade or two without the need for nuclear. Okay, Darren Miller, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.